joined by reigning coach of the year of the OSBA, back-to-back -back champion Tyrell Vernon. Appreciate it. So, from floor general to one of the top up-and-coming coaches in Canada, what's that transition been like, and do you ever feel like lacing, lacing them up and getting out there yourself? Uh, honestly, I felt that way the first year. Um, just kind of be, not being too far removed from playing myself. Um, you kind of just wanted to jump on the court with the guys, but once you got into, got into my second, third year, then it was, no, we're just all about coaching, film, getting on the court with the guys and kind of getting them in a good spot. So do you feel like it's been an easy transition for you from player to coach? Um, I think the first year was th that first was that transition period, but other than that, no, I think it was I think it was smooth. I understood that my time playing was over. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think sometimes guys have trouble with that, right. um, but I think being able to coach and still be in the court um, and still be around the game helped me with that transition. So going into coaching, it was actually uh, it was actually as smooth as it kind of possibly could be. I think. Fair so you know, three OSBA finals in a row, winning two of those three. Right. How did you lead this TRC program to have the success they've had through your time here? That's a tough question. Um, I, I'd say it's accountability. Um, making, the, making the boys accountable for what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, um, whether it's on the court, off the court, um, being accountable to their teammates, um, making sure you're, um, you're getting everything you have on every single possession, um, and at the end of the day, playing for one another. Um, I know it's, it's easy to say, um, but there's steps to it, um, and, and it's, it, it's, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, it takes time, um, but just building that culture of I'm not going to let you down, you don't let me down, um, and if you are letting me down, I'm going to let you know about it. Um, and I think it's a lot, it means a lot more if it's coming from the players rather than me. Um, I, so I can kind of teach it and enforce it in practices, but then as the season goes on, it's less me and it's more them. Um, so I think that's kind of helped us uh, in the last few years. So let's just get back to these 2019 OSBA playoffs. Mm -hmm. It was definitely a wild ride for you guys, starting yeah. with, you know, arguably your best player, Sabri Phillip, going down with that horrific injury. Right. What did you say to your guys to keep them motivated and keep them going and ultimately capturing that championship? Um, it actually goes back to kind of the question before. It was when Sabri went down, it was really emotional. Um, all the kids, uh, like they're, they're all friends on both teams at that moment, um, kind of like a brotherhood. but. Um, Sabri said he wanted everybody to play. Uh, he didn't want it to not play. And when he was down there, I know it looked really bad, but when he was down there, he was, he was upbeat, he was energetic, and he, he kind of told me, he's like, Coach, we're up by six, we need to finish this game. <laughs> so, um, so I think once I went back and told all the guys, hey, listen, he wants you, he wants you all to play and, and finish off this game and kind of do it for him, um, they were all on board for it. And then as, once that injury went down, it kinda, other people stepped up in multiple different ways. And I think that came down to, again, the accountability, next man up mentality. Um, and then they played great. Yeah, yeah they true. played great. Definitely hard of a champion. Um, so you're going to your next step in your career. You're obviously wearing the polo so, already. Yeah. You're going to be assisting with the women and men's team. Uh, and then you're lined up for the head coaching job with the men's team in the 20, after the 2021 season. Right. What's, the, what's that process been like to get to that next level? And what does this opportunity mean to you? Um, I think it's, a, it's a, it's an amazing opportunity. Um, I think coming, f like doing what we did for the last three years and then me playing at St. FX uh, with Coach K and knowing the staff that was there, uh, Leo, the athletic director, and Leanna, um, the girls coach, um, I think it was just when they called and I think it was just a good fit. Um, and then again, helping with the girls program and you know, training with the girls, getting to know them, getting more acclimated on that side for, for the next couple of years. And then once coach retires, um, taking that jump um, in the head coaching role um, I think it was just an opportunity that I think it was time for. How big of an influence has Coach Konchelski been on you, and what have you learned from him up to this point? Um, Coach K has been a massive influence from day one. Uh, when I first took the job, um, his whole kind of coaching plan throughout the season, um, we kind of went through from stage one all the way to like kind of stage five, six, seven, eight. Um, we all did it together. Um, he was there in that first finals. Uh, he flew in for that first finals game when we were playing against Orangeville. Um, and he's been that main kind of support system for me since day one. Fair enough. So you're constantly around basketball. You have yeah. been for a very long time, whether it's coaching in various leagues such as, you know, uh, Nike Crown, OSBA, or even now St. Francis. Um, when did you know you want to do this the rest of your life and, you know, really make a career out of this? I'd say it was, it was at an early age. Um, kind of when you're a kid and you're playing basketball, it's, um, you're following your dreams. 
right? And the dreams are, hey, listen, I want to play professionally. I want to go to the NBA, and I want to, um, I want to travel the world. And I think that's what drove me uh, to this point. And then when it got to the point where I was playing professionally and I did, I was able to travel the world. Then it got to a point where um, I went to Teachers College while I was uh, playing professionally with the Mississauga Power. Um, and then this opportunity came up, and, and I jumped at it. Uh, and then it kind of led me to where I am now. Um, but it was kind of, it's just the love of the game. I think you kind of build that love of the game when you're a kid and you're, and, you're, and you're trying to follow your dreams. And it kind of, I tell the kids all the time, if you really love something and you really follow it and give it everything you have, things kind of just fall into place. Um, so I'd say that, that's kind of the best way to answer that. It doesn't really feel like a job if you really love it, right? Exactly. You love doing it. Um, exactly. So you know, it, it takes a, it really does take a special kind of person to lead young men and women. Uh, especially at the level you coach at. So from your experience, what does it take to be a great coach? I kind of, I wouldn't say I'm a great coach. Well, um, we would, the people <laughs> around you definitely would. With the past three years you've had in the OSBA, for sure, you've definitely made a name for yourself. I appreciate that. Um, I think, honestly, it's just having a, having a growth mindset. Um, being able to kind of wake up every day and say, I got to get better. All right, what, what else can I watch? What else can I, what else can I figure out? What, can I look at the game in a different lens? Um, and never being comfortable. Um, I think um, with talking with Coach K, talking with um, a bunch of coaches that have kind of I've gone through um, and had a, the ability to, to, to kind of coach me, um, it's, it's never be comfortable and there's always something you can learn. Sure. So growing up, who is your big, biggest influence basketball-wise? Uh, I, I couldn't say that there was one. I'd say um, definitely my parents. Um, my mom wasn't necessarily a player, but my dad was. Mm -hmm. um, my dad coached me when I was young. Um, so just him kind of driving me, always saying, that, hey, someone else is always working harder than you. Right? So at the end of the day, you always got to find a way to get another leg up. Um, that was big for me at the, at the, at the early ages. Um, and coming through, um, having, um, uh, going to McMaster University um, and having Coach Razzo, um, who's actually now the CEBL president. Mm -hmm. um, he, he taught me to be very meticulous and very detail-oriented. Um, and then moving over with Coach K, he kind of taught me to be more, I'd say more have, it was more of a relationship um, where, hey, what do you think? Um, giving players um, kind of authority to um, speak their opinions and, and try to navigate through that with me as his point guard. So I think that was big for me with the guys that I have now It's saying, hey, what do you see? instead of just what I see. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of helped me a lot to the journey as well. And, um, and again, just picking up little things from everybody. And it, it doesn't have to be someone who I was, I was directing a relationship with or coached me or who was with me at, at every second of the day. But um, like I'll come into a high school gym and I'll see someone coach something else and I'll take something from him. Or right. They may not know it, but You're constantly um, learning, right? always, always trying to find something. So you talked a bit about your playing time. So how, uh, from being a former player, helped you out with being a head coach, specifically a point guard and a floor general? I think it's helped me a lot, um, especially the last, uh, my last few years playing um, when I was at St. FX and then uh, playing professionally. Um, you, you're, there's more of a reliance of you being a coach on the floor, um, having that direct relationship with the coach, seeing what the coach sees, um, being able to relate to the players in a way that sometimes maybe the coach can't, but because you're a player, you can say certain things that the coach can't or maybe relate to them in a different way. Um, so I think that helped me a lot in that um, what, do a player, what does a player want to hear when he's tired, when he's missed a few shots, when he's, um, let's say, someone else has made a run, right? What do they want to hear in that moment? And I kind of just go back to what would I want to hear mm -hmm. in that moment. So it's kind of, um, I think it's helped me a lot going forward. Just a couple more questions for you here. So you've obviously been a part of the OSBA for some years now. What, do you, what are you going to remember most about this league, and where do you see the OSBA going forward? Um, I think the OSBA, uh, in my opinion, it's been um, the best prep high school league in the country. Um, I think we've, uh, with the D1 talent, with the youth sport talent, with the kids going to post-secondary school, like, I think um, it's kind of second to none with our numbers. Um, and just preparing kids for that next level. 
Um, you're seeing guys now go one and done's out of our league on a regular. You're seeing kids go to the D1 level and, and just integrate themselves smoothly into that program. Um, and you've also seen kids go from here into the U sport level and integrate themselves um, kind of seamlessly. Um, I think that's what, what, this, what this league is all about. It's, it's putting all the, the top talent together and making them go at it, which is only making the kids better. Right. It's making the coaches better. Um, and it's kind of growing our game in the country, which, is, which has been great. So lastly, Tyrell, where do you see yourself in the future and what's your ultimate goal coaching-wise? Um, I, th I haven't looked too, too far into it. I think uh, St. FX, FX is my main priority. Um, I think um, going in there and, and building a great roster and, and, and a great culture and kind of following along with Coach K's already put in there for the last 45 years. Um, and at the end of the day, my, my goal is um, to be an AUS champion now. Uh, my goal is to be a national champion at the youth sports level. Um, and that's kind of what's driving me now. Um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we get there. Perfect. Tyrell, appreciate the time. Appreciate Best of you. luck moving forward. Appreciate you. Thank you.